Assalamu alaikum and welcome to MPT channel. Today's topic is SRT planning. It's an early experience for me uh, in this technique. So I'm going to share my reflections. So SRT is a uh, refer to steep dose gradient, high dose per fraction, short course of treatment, with smaller margins. But remember, it's less forgiving for error than standard fractionation treatment. It can be delivered with the combination of VMAT IMRT and it needs IGRT. So imaging modality is very important. Before uh, start, uh, planning, we must have a CT or a volume in which we have to plan. Before going through it, uh, once check the CT appropriately. So there must not blurring effect stripes. There's no ghosting effect of blur purification or artifact. If there is something like that, then you should not go with SRS or SBRT on that specific patient. Try to get re-CT if possible, or ignore this technique. Go with VMAD or MRT. That's the recommendation of WPM 101 uh, report. Now, talk about imaging accuracy. So multimodality imaging is required. So one may have a fusion. And when we are performing these kind of uh, fusion, we must have a comprehensive peer program to check whether it is uh, going correctly or not. We need a high accuracy and high precision in SRS. So once we have a contour uh, or we are doing making a contour, we must make it in a high resolution segment because the volumes are way too small as compared to the conventional treatment. So minor uh, changes in the volume in different slides may cause a large variation. So whatever the volume is, like CTV, we take a margin, convert those volume to high resolution segment. So right now, it's a low resolution. So once we convert it, it will be high. But the most important thing you need to see, I don't know how clear is that, that in the low uh, resolution, the volume is around 4.6 centimeter cube. Whereas in a high, you have 4.5 centimeter cube. This is how we convert. And when we convert it, it's 4.5. So the difference is, so the difference is at the low, it's 4.6. When we convert it, it is 4.5. But if we make high resolution before uh, making the volume, like a uh, volume is right now is empty and we convert it directly to the high resolution and then we make the volume. Then it's, it is 4.63. So what is going happening? The difference in the PTV volume is two person. So the recommendation is before filling the volume, before making the volume, one, and the empty structure should be converted into high resolution. And then you should make the volume. It might not be a clinical relevance, but it is. However, remember, near to max dose to the report, it is defined as two, two person. So for this, we need to follow the this kind of guideline. This is the ICR 91 requirement. So the target uh, usually the GTV and the PTV, or in some clinic, they used to make a CTV and then they take margin of PTV. 
and the margin varies doctor to doctor, the positioning of the volume. Uh, so one has to be very careful while taking those margins. Ad hoc structures are required for the planning in order to reduce the dose, confine the dose to the volume. Arcs are very important, uh, the selection of arcs. And this is a paper published, uh, it's an old paper, and I recommend multiple arcs. But the result is can be, result can be achieved with three or four arc, but it should be two non-coplanar field and one coplanar field, or we may have three non-coplanar field. Margin around the PTV. So that also varies clinic to clinic, and uh, it depend also depend on the how much the GTV to PTV margin is there, or is of uh, there is only GTV in some of the centers. So you can you can go with a zero mm margin or one mm margin or minus one mm margin, but remember what's the tolerance of your MLC, whether you are using HD MLC or you're using a millennium MLC nominal MLC of 5 mm. Um, yes. So uh, the gurus of uh, the SRS uh, recommend that uh, with the HD MLC, you may go with 1 mm or 0 mm margins, but with the 0.5 uh, um, CM MLC, you should try to make with 2 mm um, margin around the PTV. Give some tolerance. Another point is the collimation. If there are two volumes, try to get appropriate collimation so that it will uh, conform the volume uh, appropriately. Like you can see, if this is a collimation, this is not an appropriate thing. This is much better. The last uh, in this slide is uh, the jaw settings. Most of the centers, well, most of the machines of TrueBeam has a jaw tracking system. So in a small field, it is not recommended to use jaw tracking. You should use a fixed jaw setting. Because if you use jaw tracking with a smaller volumes, it may increase the number of monitoring units. So this is the workflow of VMIT planning, and we are quite familiar with that. But if you go with SRS workflow, a simulation patient setup, and if you are going with the brain, then we may have a, a device uh, to immobilize the patient. Uh, if it is a frameless, of course, the encompass is provided. So uh, CT imaging, MRI, or PET is required. Mostly the brain cases have CT and MRI. The volumes uh, follow the guideline of ICRU 91. High resolution structures are recommended. And of course, key review settings are here in our hospital, arcs, tool, where, and there you can set the margins around the PTV. And in optimization, fine grit should be selected for 1.25 mm. Normally is 2.5 mm. And also on the dose calculation, we recommend it to 1.25 mm. Then evolution of uh, plan evolution and patient specific QA and machine QA, that's the part was added and for each and every patient, machine QA should be done, isocalc especially, uh, that's a recommendation. Verification with the cone beam CT on Linux and uh, the doctor should be present there to verify uh, the images and then the del treatment delivery. Daily QA should be done because SRS has one or two fraction or three fractions, so QA is another important factor. So now I'm going to share the cases with you guys, which I have done in the recent weeks. So the case one is a malignant neoplasm of bronchus or lung. Now you can see a very small volume of 0.8 cc, and we gave a dose of 21 gray in one fraction. Got full coverage. Here you can see. Uh, Appreciate the coverage. You can see the fall off of the dose. It's uh, around uh, 282 of 21. So it's way too low in the way to confine. Three arcs are used, uh, two non-coplanar fields and one coplanar arc. 
So the brain twice GTV has been verified by the clinician. It's 2.3 cc. Hotspot is 134. Mean dose of PTV is 24. Normalization is done according to the guideline of ICRU. Conformity index of uh, this volume is 1 and gradient is 0.25, which should be less than 0.3. The couch angles are used. Uh, these are the couching we use in this patient. And this is a DVH. This is a GTV and this is a PTV. Another case of two mats, it's a renal carcinoma of brain mats. And the PTV1 is a volume of 4 cc and the PTV2 is 3.9 cc. The dose is 30 gray and 5. And the brain mass GTV is uh, less than 10 cc. Uh, you can see two volumes are there, so the more brain was treated. The hot spot is 132. Normalization is done on 98% of the volume. Conformity is good, and gradient is another factor here. And the couch angle we have used, you can see uh, 33, 0, and 90. And that's another confined dose. Low spillage is here. And this is the DVH. And these are the GTV1 and GTV2, and there's the PTV1 and PTV2. Another case, malignant neoplasm of bronchus volume is 3.2. It's a bit big. And the dose is 21 in 1. 21 gray in 1 fraction. The brain minus GTV is less than 4.7 cc. And hotspot is 134 from the posterior side. And then the couch is 90. 325 was used and a 0 degree. And again, it's quite conformal. The last case uh, is metastatic ovarian cancer. It's a big one. Uh, so around uh, volume size is 3.2 cc. I think I did some mistake here as uh, duplication. It's smaller than 3.2 cc. And that's a larger one. So I rectified that thing. So dose is 30 in six. Okay, the GTV is less than 11 and hotspot is 121. So the hotspot is low because the volume is bigger. But again, uh, there is a conformity and you can see the low dose village is very confined to the volume. So the grid size should be 1.5 in optimization and dose calculation for small lesion, avoid jaw tracking, check mu's usually. Uh, they are arc uh, per arc uh, equal to the dose or high up to 40%. So whatever the dose is, uh, the per arc is compatible means. That's what, uh, my observation. Evaluate the DVH and special dose distribution slice by slice thoroughly. Conformity and gradient has to be checked and reported. Uh, this is a patient-specific QA of uh, case two, uh, two brain mats. Uh, we did uh, all the SRS case or uh, patient specific here done with the flim dosimetry, and all cases are passed about 95% for two um, gamma index, two by two, two by 0.2 CM distance. Uh, they're all passed. And the reason I'm showing this one is uh, you can see um, there are two volumes. So we can't see two in the one plane. So what we did is we placed the flame at this level and at this level on the phantom and at this level. So three flames are uh, three flames are there. And we evaluate all three flames in one uh, plan. So what we get is uh, on a zero slice, it's 94 point, it's um, on 7 cm, slide, the anterior slide. Then there's a zero slice, there, where is a 50% of acidose, and then it's the posterior slice. So again, it's 95. There's a Flim Pro Q is a software, and we match it manually. Here you can see and, and match, it will match like that. So uh, SRS, accurate SRS is delivered with immobilization and image guidance, and of course, appropriate plan. 
So the caution, inspect all the slides, look critically at the dose statistics during the review process. The optimizer will do what you ask. Be sure to specify a priority as best as you can, particularly for rapid R review, the MLC sequence. Visit our channel. Uh, there are numerous number of presentation of different topics to be useful for all of you. And thank you for listening.